What's going on guys, Alex here with TFL and I'm here in Santa Monica with the 2024 BMW i7 M70 xDrive. What a name. We've already done some videos with the i7 but not this top of the line M70 model. And one of the videos we've done with the i7 was a grumpy guy review where Roman kind of went through and said everything that he was annoyed with with this car. But I love performance, I also love tech, and this car is loaded with both of those things. So we're gonna look at this car from a fresh perspective, see what it's all about. Let's jump into the review. I'm gonna start by talking about performance and some of the drivetrain specs. And you can tell that this is the top of the line i7 by the badging on the side and you get a peek of the big brake calipers. Really impressive zero to 60 time. It's listed at 3.5 seconds, which is awesome for a giant limousine basically that weighs over 6,000 pounds. Top speed is 130 miles an hour and this makes a lot of power, 650 horsepower. So it's the most powerful seven series sedan ever from BMW and 749 pound feet of torque. Although you can boost that in the M Sport boost mode up to 811 pound feet of torque. Dual motors, so you've got all wheel drive, one motor at the front axle, one at the rear and it's all powered by a 105.6 kilowatt hour battery. AC charging rate is 11 kilowatts. BMW says that'll take about 12 hours to charge up, but it does support DC fast charging up to 195 kilowatts. So the same rate as the iX M60. Uh, so that should cut your charging rates significantly. And then for range, you're looking anywhere from 274 to 291 miles of range, depending on how it's configured. And also it is worth noting that there's a max range driving mode as well. So that'll limit the speed a lot to 56 miles an hour. It'll also deactivate climate control and that'll give you obviously the max range out of this. The design is pretty striking and this is a long car. I picked it up from a hotel valet this morning actually and everybody that worked at the valet was crowding around it, checking it out. So it definitely draws some attention and I think part of that is this two-tone paint job. I'm pretty sure they call this lower part liquid copper. I could be wrong on that, uh, but it's kind of got in some sunlight sort of a purplish hue to it. Not sure if I'm the biggest fan of the color of this one, uh, but I do like the look of two-tone paint jobs on luxury vehicles like this. I think it's pretty cool. Nice looking two-tone wheel design as well. These are 21 inch wheels, although you can option uh, this i7 M70 with 20 inch wheels if you want a little more tire on there. And up front, you'll find the pretty massive BMW kidney grill. It's got the active shutters in it. And this is either a design that you love or you hate. It's really controversial when it first came out. It's definitely grown on me a little bit, uh, but that's what you'll find up front. And then if we look to the side of that, you can see the headlights are kind of in this lower section here. You can see the big projector bulb over on this side. And then if we move up, We've got our running lights here, which if you look closely, have a pretty cool crystal design to them. I think that's a nice touch. All right, now we get to take this i7 M70 for a little drive, and we're in a pretty fitting place to do that. We're here in the LA area, Santa Monica, by the beach, where these things are probably seen more often than anywhere else in the country. Now, there's a good part to that and a bad part. The good part is that the roads around here are really rough and bumpy, so get to put this suspension, the super advanced suspension to the test. The bad part is we're in the Performance M70 and we've got a ton of horsepower and not a lot of room to put that to use, but that's all right. We can still get a feel for the car and I'll give it a little bit of gas here. Keys went flying. Wow, that's got some power. That was the first time I floored it. And uh, yeah, that's snap your neck fast, which is uh, impressive for something this heavy. Stuff is flying everywhere. I'll hit the boost mode and do that one more time. Yeah, quick, very quick. That's uh, <laughs> a car this heavy and this luxurious and plush doesn't need to have that much power. But why not? It's pretty fun and it's putting a smile on my face. Once you get out of the throttle a little bit and you're just rolling down the road, it is really comfortable. I mentioned the seats, they are super, super plush. So that gives you a lot of comfort going down the road, but also this car just floats. And there's a lot of times when I roll up to like an expansion joint or a bump in the road 
and I'm expecting a big jolt because that's what you get in a lot of other cars or most of the cars I own or drive on a regular basis. I don't usually drive $150,000 cars all that often. But yeah, you come up to these expansion joints, you expect it to uh, you know, shake the car around a little bit, but most of the time you just hear the noise in this car and it's a pretty quiet interior, but you can still hear the potholes and the expansion joints, but you don't feel them nearly as much as you would in any other car. And that's sticking out to me. It would take me hours to get somewhere here in LA where I could really put my foot into this and open it up, test the zero to 60. It's just not gonna happen here in Santa Monica. But the good news is I kind of felt what straight line acceleration, at least for a second or two feels like. And that's what a car like this is about. This isn't a car you wanna, you know, take to a racetrack and corner in or, go tear up the twisty roads near your house. It's not that kind of performance car. It's a luxury car that goes really quick in a straight line. Found my car keys though. They launched to the back during that and they were all the way up here. You made it to the back seat. It is a head turner. I have noticed a couple of Porsches, one right there, uh, turn their heads as I'm driving by. People are definitely curious about this car and it's definitely striking and man, it is quick. If you actually like just need a little bit of passing power to get on the highway or something, you have to be really delicate with the throttle. Cause if you just kind of step into it like a quarter or a halfway, you're moving pretty good. And if you have loose things around the cabin, they're going to start moving too. Overall, just super powerful um, and so comfortable. It's crazy that something that just floats down the road this comfortably can uh, go that quickly and accelerate that hard. Besides that, we've got all kinds of driving modes. I talked about the boost mode before. Um, when you change modes, the suspension will change. You can change the regen braking. I've got it in kind of the adaptive mode right now, so it's deciding what to do. But overall, a really nice driving experience. Not frustrating to drive at all. In fact, really fun and nice to drive. I'm loving how this is going down the road. Um, yeah, sometimes playing with the screens and like getting my phone to connect to the Bluetooth took me a second to find in the menu. But once you're actually going down the road, it's really good. All right, well, most of the magic of this car is on the inside and it's actually in the back seat, but we're gonna start with the front seat, get that stuff out of the way. Lot going on on this door handle here. So you've got a button over here on this side, this kind of panel with the lines in it to lock. You've got an automatic door opening button right there, kind of in the middle. And then you've got a traditional style, it's an electronic popper, but a handle style pull on the inside there. So if you walk up to this car this way and press the automatic button, the door will pop but it won't actually open all the way until you flip around and give it some more space. And then sometimes it needs to think a little bit. So let me close that again. And it doesn't wanna work, so I'll close it manually. But if you walk up to it kind of from the back here and stay out of the way of all the sensors, it'll open up for you, no problem. Before I hop in, I'll kind of show you around a little bit, give you a look at the seats, which are an interesting mix of kind of a leather upper material and somewhat of a cloth lower. Uh, I really like the seats, they're really comfortable, although this cloth is leaving some dust and little lint all over the steering wheel. I noticed that kind of flying around the car as I was driving. Uh, pretty low miles on this, so maybe that would get better with a little bit of time as they get worn in, uh, but that's one thing I noticed. Very comfortable though. Really nice looking M steering wheel here in the front seat. I love the blue and red stitching. I like how thick the steering wheel is. It feels real nice in your hands, flat bottom. It's got some cool design elements here at the bottom as well, but I'm gonna hop in and take a seat. And what I can do is just put my foot on the brake and the door over here will swing closed. Pretty wild interior design. And the first thing that strikes me is this light bar that stretches across the dash and onto the door cards over there that lights up. You can change the colors of it and it has that same crystal look to it as the running lights at the front of the car. And you'll notice that in here is there's uh, a lot of that crystal design element going on. Huge screen that stretches all the way across from end to end here. And it is a touch screen, 
tons to go through in here. There are so many apps and a lot of these pull in from your phone. It also, of course, has Apple CarPlay and that is a really nice widescreen version of CarPlay. I'm really liking that. Uh, so yeah, great integration there. And then down here in this little light bar I was showing you, you have some touch controls for your defrost, your hazards, and also the, uh, the fan controls. So you kind of tap it there and you can set the fan speed or how much air is coming out of the air vents. You can also slide it. And then this lower joystick down here, that's used to control the direction of the air. And you've got that um, on both sides in the middle and then over on each corner as well. Very fancy looking door cards, leather everywhere. You've got a crystal um, or crystal looking seat control. And I know Roman wasn't a huge fan of all the crystal in this car, but I like it. I think it's actually pretty cool. Bowers and Wilkins sound system, and you can see the uh, speaker grates there have a pretty sweet design to them as well. Not a huge fan of the fake carbon that you see kind of in the middle section here. It looks a little out of place to me in this car. Roman said that the crystal looked out of place to him, and I disagree. I think the crystal matches this car perfectly. I don't think the carbon fiber does the same thing though. Here you can see that interior lighting screen so you can turn a reading light on. Um, you can turn the ambient lights on and change the color of those. So right now it's set to this kind of pink color, uh, but you can come in here and choose from a lot of different options. So we'll go Indigo and you can see everything kind of changes down here. You can change the brightness, a lot of things you can do there. I'm not gonna go through all the different screens and all the different you know, menus and modes because there's way too much to go through, but you have a pretty nice charging screen. I'll go through some of them. So this'll you know, show you everything you need to know as to do with the battery and the charging for the car. I also wanted to show you the uh, seat comfort menu because there's a lot of stuff to look at in here. So you can control your climate control. It's of course got heated and ventilated seats, uh, heated steering wheel as well, but I shouldn't have backed out of there. You also have massaging seats which I've got turned on right now as I'm recording this video. So it's giving me a little back massage and yeah, a car this expensive, you should expect it to have massaging seats. I think that's enough of the front seat. This car is really about the back seat. So we'll hit the little door pop button. The door didn't automatically open. So Roman's right about that. Sometimes the doors are a little fussy, but let's look at the back. This is really what I've been excited for is to take a look at the back seat because this is a car that you're supposed to be driven around in not uh, driving yourself. And it's all about backseat luxury in here. There is a little button on the door card here. You press that and the door will come closed. Little screen on there, we'll get to that in a second. Huge amounts of leg room, really nice comfy looking headrests up there. And the seat on the right side of the vehicle behind the passenger seat has this extendable leg rest as well. All right, so we'll pop into here. We'll swipe up to unlock as it's telling us to do. And I guess I wanna recline. That's the first thing I wanna do. So I'll tap seats. At the bottom here, it looks like we have a little sort of recline button, lounge position. That seat is moving fully forward right now, way far forward. Now it's scooting up a little bit. This little portion by my legs is starting to lift up. The whole seat back that I'm in is reclining now. And this little footrest is popping up here. And if I wanted to, and I didn't have dirty shoes, I could plop them right there. I could definitely get used to this. If a TFL had one of these, I'd be riding in the back of this all the time. Now I'm gonna go back into here and I'm gonna hit the home button and let's see, we'll turn on the display. There's this massive screen here. So we'll fold it down. Got our shades coming up. This massive screen is folding down and that all happens really quick. And it just got pretty dark in here. The shade came over and covered the back as well. And now it's asking me to choose my language. And I am, uh, gotta say, I'm pretty impressed by the uh, resolution of this. Looks really crisp. You now have some controls over here where you can change the positioning of the screen. So if I tap that, you can kind of see it move around a little bit and change where it's sitting. You can also hit a button to bring it closer to you. And I don't believe, oh, it is a touch screen. Look at that. So we've got Fire TV here. 
and it looks like it needs to check for updates before it'll let me do anything else. So it looks like you need a eSIM, like a connectivity plan, cellular connectivity to make all this work and it's telling me I'm offline. So that's all right, we don't need to uh, use the Fire TV, but pretty cool that you've got that option. That'll definitely keep you occupied on long trips. Got a big sunroof right here as well, which I'm sure if I dug a little more, here we go, blinds. And yeah, I can tap the top shade and open that there. So everything is meant to be controlled from the back seat of this vehicle. And you've got a pretty cool looking pattern up on the, the roof glass there. You can also control the lights. You can access the phone. You can move the seats uh, all from this little screen right here on the door. You've also, of course, got your window switch. You can lock and unlock it from back here. Um, so yeah, a lot of entertainment in the back seat. And one more thing, if we look over here, can pull this center armrest down. It's got that same nice cloth material from the front seats right there and a little spot for a wireless phone charger as well as a little storage compartment right here. Pretty much all wrapped up in the back seat here. So I'll tap this one button and it will bring my seat position uh, back to where I started. So kind of leaning up now, this little leg rest is coming down and hopefully this seat will automatically come back into place. Not sure if it will though. And there it's moving now. When I folded up the screen into the ceiling and opened this door, the seat started to come back to its original position. I'm pretty enamored by tech, so I could sit here and play with this stuff for hours and it's pretty fascinating to me. So I'm a big fan of the tech in this car, but I do see how Roman at least and some other people think it's a little fiddly. Um, I just had someone come over to the back seat while I was filming, asking what I was doing. And uh, I was just telling them I was, you know, taking some videos of the car. And I kept trying to talk to them through this window. But every time I put the window down, like three seconds later, it would come back up. So I had to sit there and constantly pull the, the window switch or push the window switch down so I could have a conversation with this guy. Not quite sure why it was doing that. So yeah, some things in this car that maybe sometimes make you think there's too much tech, but I'm still a big fan of uh, the tech in here, especially this big screen in the back. I also wanna come around back, pop the trunk and show you what kind of space we're dealing with here. It is an electronic hatch and there is tons and tons of room back here. Um, it's a little hard to see because I've got all my bags, but that is a massive suitcase with all my motorcycle gear, pretty big camera bag too with all my camera gear, and there's a lot of space behind there as well. So a lot of space to put all your stuff. So there you go, the BMW i7 M70. Expensive? Yes. This car starting price is $168,500. And I don't know the exact price on this one. They didn't leave a spec sheet in the glove box. So I don't know exactly what packages it has, but I'm sure it's got a few and the pricing will only go up from there. So very expensive vehicle, but um, this isn't a car that you're buying to drive to work. This is a car that if you're being chauffeured around in, this is kind of what you want. Really comfortable in the back. Um, Sporty, yes, quick, yes, uh, but really the main takeaway for me was how floaty it was down the road. You hit some expansion joints that uh, you expect to feel coming from some other cars and instead you just hear them in this car, so pretty cool. I definitely wasn't as frustrated with this car as Roman. I uh, don't know if I give it a total thumbs up, but I definitely am not super grumpy about it either. So there you have it. Let me know what you think of this i7 M70, the most performance oriented i7 you can get down in the comments below. Check out alttfl.com so you don't miss anything. See you in the next video.